Hello there, thanks a lot for coming by PosterCentral.com's video blog today. I'm Pete Howard, and today I'm showing you, of course, one of the true kings of 1960s rhythm and blues, Otis Redding, and I'm showing you a pair of posters, original vintage window cards, from the spring of 1966. Well, that's the year that Otis gave us satisfaction and try a little tenderness, and was the last full year, sadly, of his life. And this first one of the two is a real whopper, isn't it? Well, strongly resembles a tour blank here, but I've never seen this one from another city, so who's to say if and until we ever do? The location was Houston, Texas, and you've got this really fun, highly unusual graphic design. You know, it's like that real center lettering there is almost amateurish, but not really, right? But you know, that the letters for just Otis and Redding really give off that vibe. It's sort of misleading in, in a really fun way, I think. But then you look down at the bottom of this poster and almost jarringly there's a typical business credit for Shaw Artists Corporation in New York and Chicago. And then in the lower right corner there's a credit for Posters Inc. on Cherry Street in Philadelphia. And you're sort of going, huh? I thought it was designed locally and printed in Houston or something and, you know, Posters Inc. I've done dozens of their posters on my video blog, a very well-known national poster printer. So it's, uh, it's really a nice combination of graphics and everything. And most collectors that I know really love this thing. It really sings to us collectors. You could say it's got you know, as much soul as the subject matter itself. And it's beautifully oversized. Not just a 14 by 22 inch window card. This baby is 17 by 26, so it's got a lot of heft behind this unique design. So, taking it from the top there, as you can see, it does say the Palladium Ballroom on Southmore Avenue in Houston. And I gotta tell you what happened when I first encountered this poster over 20 years ago, and I saw the amateur lettering on Otis Redding. I just thought Palladium was an amateurish spelling mistake <laughs> by the typesetter, and that it was supposed to be Palladium, you know. And uh, boy, did I get schooled myself, though. No, the, the Palladium, spelled just like this, was a shrine for rhythm and blues and blues in Houston in the 1960s. And that venue information up there pretty much gets standard after that, including the date, Tuesday, March 22nd. Then you've got this just really unique, outstanding, fun red and black design, right? I mean, look at that. You've got marquee lights around a couple of boxes and a starburst around Otis's floating head. Very eye-catching, childish lettering, if you will, as I've called it. And he got stars and musical notes everywhere. And he got this second, look at that, full length action shot of Otis in a tuxedo, complete with cummerbund. I mean, this thing just really has a lot of fun bells and whistles to it, no doubt. And then you've got, let me move in a little bit here, shift my seat, this really great fun wording down there in the lower left. Check that out, right? Volt Recording Artist. Well, Stax Volt, of course, a hugely influential and important soul label in the 60s and two singles and an album are listed. Now that's unusual. The only other artist I can think of that got both albums and singles listed on their poster was Ray Charles on any kind of consistent basis. And the three titles in quotes, Respect, Otis Sings the Blues, and Satisfaction. Well, needless to say, the song Respect is a key element of any Otis Redding concert poster. Uh, he wrote the song, took a top five rhythm and blues, in fact that was the previous fall, uh, 65. And then naturally, as you know, Aretha Franklin turned it into her signature song, so it's easily one of the ten most important R&B records of all the 1960s. Then that Otis Sings the Blues, well that's not actually correct by any means. I mean, his recent album was called Otis Blue, Otis Redding Sings Soul. So, you know, that's, uh, yeah, that's quite a botched album on t title on there for sure. But, um, you know, I guess they, guess they sort of got the gist of it across, but uh, definitely jumbled words on that one. And then Otis's cover of the Rolling Stones' Satisfaction, which was a brand new single at the time for Otis. I mean, it literally entered Billboard magazine's R&B chart in the issue dated three days before this poster, March 19th of 1966. And like respect, Satisfaction would also go top five rhythm and blues for Otis. Now this fun poster survived, as they often do, thanks to a Houston teenager who just loved this club 
and saw many shows there. And I'm speaking of Mr. Bill Bentley, <laughs> who went on to a long career in the music business and is very well liked and respected. So good job on saving this one, Bill. Okay, so again, in the spring of 66, let's jump ahead, uh, what do we have here, three weeks, and to Oakland, California, the West Coast, and a poster with a much more familiar design to us poster collectors. Absolutely, take a look at this. Tillman Press out of Oakland, California, and, you know, a very familiar look to all of us who do collect posters. And the extra special element on this one, in the top of the yellow is move and groove, right? With. <laughs> oh man, that's really nice. I just love that. Interestingly, that picture you see there of Otis is the exact same publicity photo as the previous uh, poster had, only in this case, <clears throat> excuse me, they used the entire 8x10 publicity still, and the previous poster they just took his head out and floated it. So <laughs> that's a, you know, different usage of the same photograph, you get a lot of mileage from it. Up top there from Tillman, they did print in red lettering Continental Club in Oakland, Thursday, April 14th, 9.30 p.m. until question mark. Who knows? Why put a limit on it? And then the poster itself has really fun elements. As you can see, it does say 10-piece orchestra, and it's got respect in the lower left-hand corner. Thank goodness, big part of Eddie Otis' poster. Mr. Pitiful in the lower right-hand corner. Well, that was simply Otis's first ever top 10 hit, and of course on the R&B charts. And then one more element that Tillman is famous for on this Otis poster, that it is present, not missing, it's only in the yellow area, so it's a little bit subtle, but I'm speaking of their split fountain printing technique where they change colors on you, fading from one to the other. As you can see, just in the lettering, starting with move and groove on the Otis thing, <coughs> it does go from red down to black, and then down into dark green. I don't know if you can quite make out that black to dark green, but that is absolutely what it does, and it's a nice, fun touch. Wow, Otis Redding. Is he Mr. Pitis Mr. Pitiful? I think he's more like Mr. Respect and Mr. Satisfaction than most of us. Most of us. And what a couple of great window cards from the spring of 1966 for the Big O. Ah, thanks a lot for dropping by today. Great fun showing them to you. And uh, we'll see you again for something soon, hopefully as much fun. Okay, have a good day. Bye-bye.